content warning, discussion of suicide, depression, brief discussions of hate crimes, and my incredibly frenetic emotional whiplash. Hey, it's me again, your old pal who reminds you of the barista that's rude to everyone but you and never charges you for your scone. Some of you may know based on the title up there somewhere, but for those new to this trend, this video is in response to a call to action from the YouTube channel, The Costume Codex. And the call to action was in the form of a question. What is hope to you? What does it mean to have hope in these dark times? Can you tell me about one scene that speaks to you about hope? Over the last month, I'd seen Jesse Gender and mainly Mandy's videos answering this question, and I've not stopped thinking about which scene I might do. I have always been incredibly moved and affected by media and art, and there have been so many books and shows that have completely changed the way that I think, changed the lens with which I see the world. So I knew I had to do my own take on this, obviously. And I think we all need a little break from my content about like hate groups. Until the three more videos of that exact content coming to you soon. <coughs> so I knew I wanted to make this video, but there was a lot of scenes just banging around in my old skull, like a lot. I used to binge TV like I needed it to breathe. So. I had a bunch of shows to choose from. I had considered a scene from Buffy, from Xena, Queer's Folk, The L Word, some of my most formative shows, but none of them felt right for who I am now. Now that I'm years out from the times in my life where those shows were most important to me. But recently, I went to the Van Gogh 360 exhibit, and within moments, I knew what this video was going to be about. I stood in this huge room surrounded by what is considered some of the greatest art ever made, projected all around me, encompassing me, crushing in its beauty. And I thought to myself, God, uh, he never knew. He created art so universally loved, it is now immortal, and he never knew the difference he would make. That even though his life was cut short due to his struggles with depression and mental illness, everything he made mattered. In his short time, he changed the entire world and made a tangible difference. And it reminded me of three scenes at once. I'm not cheating here, this is about one scene, just stay with me. The first scene is a simple line in the CW drama One Tree Hill. The line is said in the second episode and echoes out into the last. Your art matters. That's what got me here. You should know that your art matters, Lucas. It's what got me here. Your art matters. It's not the scene I chose, though. Its relevance here is that that phrasing stuck with me throughout my life. Your art matters. So let's talk about animorphs, huh? By the way, if you like this video, please thumb me, sub for me, and praise me. Let's be real. I both could and have talked about animorphs for hours on end. It is very easy to start and very difficult to stop. It is, in my opinion, one of the greatest series of books ever written, and anyone who ever read them and says otherwise is a liar and a suppressive person you should cut out of your life. They are a crusty little snake. Anyway, Animorphs is a series about a handful of 13-year-olds who are recruited into a war to save Earth. The only line of defense. It is a bloody, terrifying story about the horrors of war, the effects of PTSD, and how violence changes you. In the penultimate book of the series, as one of the main characters is dying, having sacrificed herself, she is once again face to face with the series' version of God. This is Rachel's final narration. I wanted so much to live. I wanted so much to stay and not to leave. In a moment, no answer would matter to me, but just the same, I wanted to know what I guess any dying person wants to know. Answer this. Did I... 
did I make a difference? My life and my death. Was I worth it? Did my life really matter? Yes, he said. You were brave. You were strong. You were good. You mattered. Yeah. Okay, then. Okay, then. And that line, too, stuck with me. Did I make a difference? Was I worth it? It lingered so much so that it surfaced when I was bashed a few years ago. I mean, a lot of thoughts were, were going through my head as it was being kicked into the pavement. I'm going to die. I'm never going to see my friends again. You know, ow. But behind the pain, the fear was fueled by one main thing. The thing that even as a child, I understood to be the purpose of why we're here. The only reason I had ever heard that really clicked for me. The first thought I, I have in the morning and the last I have at night, the same thing Rachel asks in her last moments. Did I make a difference? Will I make a difference? Was I worth it? W was I worth it? So that scene in Animorphs that left me it left me with a question, a constant hum in the back of my head, an aspirational barometer for a life well lived, but it's only the question, the possibility. Was I enough? Did I make a difference? The answer would come years later when I watched an episode of Doctor Who, Vincent and the Doctor. This is the scene I want to talk about, but in order to show you what I saw when I watched this scene, I needed you to have the context of why I saw it the way I did, through my eyes. Quick background on Doctor Who. His name is the Doctor, not Doctor Who. Doctor Who is the name of the show. Time is wibbly wobbly and I'm in love with him. So we have the titular Doctor who travels through time and space with his bestie, Amy Pond. Gorgeous actor, gorgeous name for a character, isn't it? Amy Pond, no comments. At the beginning of the episode, they're visiting a museum together and notice that there's something strange in one of the windows in the painting, The Church at Auvers, painted by Vincent van Gogh. They ask the very adorable and knowledgeable orator when the painting was made, compliment his bow tie, and off they go back in time to the day before it was painted. Because yes, it's time to find van Gogh, sweaty. If you know about van Gogh's life, you know he struggled with poverty, depression, psychotic episodes, and delusions. And by the day the doctor and Amy get there, he has like a few months before he's set to die by suicide. Okay, so they're back in time. The doctor and Amy Pond come upon him in a cafe, Vincent, and he's trying to trade a self-portrait for a drink. You could probably buy a small country by selling a Van Gogh self-portrait today, but it's made clear several times that, as an artist, is considered a joke. A flop. Worse than a Heidi Montag, because he didn't even have the desperate gaze standing him. During his life, he only sold a single painting, and not for very much. He created some of the most beautiful, inspiring, and appreciated art to ever exist. And he never knew how much it would matter to people, how many lives it would change and touch. He seems angry and despondent. But upon spending even a little bit of time with the doctor and Amy, he acts invigorated with a renewed sense of wonder. This doesn't last, though, because a quick mention of their eventual departure sends him spiraling. Oh. <laughs> it's so clear you cannot help. And when you leave, and everyone always leaves, I will be left once more with an empty heart and no hope. My experience is that there is, you know, surprisingly always hope. And your experience is incomplete. I know how it will end. And it will not end well. And honestly, part of me feels that both of them were right. There is always hope, but it isn't always going to be easy to find or enough to pull someone through. Often we feel alone because we see the world in a way other people don't. So we try to show them to create something that will make them see it the way we do, so that we aren't standing alone staring at a beauty only we can see. Try to see what I see. 
We're so lucky we're still alive to see this beautiful world. Look at the sky. It's not dark and black and without character. The black is in fact deep blue. And over there, lighter blue. And blowing through the blueness and the blackness, the wind swirling through the air. And then shining, burning, bursting through the stars. And you see how they roll their light. Everywhere we look, the complex magic of nature blazes before our eyes. I've seen many things, my friend, but you're right. Nothing quite as wonderful as the things you see. There are so many people here today who can see the world differently, see it swirl and coalesce in their own way. How many of them are out there making art? How many of them don't know how much their art matters? That it makes a difference? That it's worth it? And what if you could tell them, show them, create hope out of the truth that they bring so much beauty to the world, that you see them and they've helped you to see something you couldn't before? What if you could go back in time and tell him, Van Gogh, tell him that it mattered, that it made all the difference? What then? Could you change his fate? Or better yet, what if you could show him, let him see for himself? Well, I just wondered, between you and me, in a uh, hundred words, where do you think Van Gogh rates in the history of art? Well, um... Big question, um, but to me, Van Gogh is the finest painter of them all. Certainly the most popular, great painter of all time. The most beloved, his command of color, the most magnificent. He transformed the pain of his tormented life into ecstatic beauty. Pain is easy to portray, but to use your passion and pain to portray the ecstasy and joy and magnificence of our world, no one had ever done it before. Perhaps no one ever will again. But to my mind, that strange, wild man who roamed the fields of Provence was not only the world's greatest artist, but also one of the greatest men who ever lived. No, they are tears of joy. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. You're, you're welcome. You're welcome. Sorry about the beard. When they bring him back to his time, his home, he once again is ecstatic and inspired. And Amy believes that due to giving him this new hope, they've rewritten history completely and asked the doctor to bring her back to the museum they were just at to see the new paintings that she sure will be there as a product of his new extended life. There's nothing new. The day of July 27th, 1890 ends as it always had, with Van Gogh walking out into the field in overs and shooting himself. Vincent Van Gogh, who committed suicide at only 37. He is now acknowledged to be one of the foremost artists of all time. If you follow me now. So you were right, no new paintings. We didn't make a difference at all. I wouldn't say that. The way I see it, every life is a, is a pile of good things and bad things. Hey. The good things don't always soften the bad things, but vice versa, the bad things don't necessarily spoil the good things or make them unimportant. 
and that's it right there. Mental illness can be more powerful than hope, can spring up in a moment where someone does something they wouldn't otherwise. And in some cases, there's simply nothing anyone could do to prevent that. But it, it doesn't mean you can't make a difference. The message of hope I got from this isn't about Vincent himself or suicide or, or mental illness. No, it's, it's about art. It's always about art. It's about that thing inside of you bubbling up and forcing its way out onto your, your canvas, your page, your camera. And it's about sharing that experience. It's about how much difference it makes, how life-changing it can be to tell someone that their art matters, that they were able to take the things that only they could see and make them tangible, real, and understandable to you. That you see what they see and that they're not alone in the world that they live in. That yes, Did I make a difference? of course they made a difference. Of course their art matters and you know it because it's affected you. That when the time comes, you don't have to ask what she did. Was I worth it? Was I worth it? Did I make a difference? Did I make a difference? Did my life really matter? It, it's like we all share a planet, but we live in different worlds. Each of us dealing with something, struggling with something, celebrating something. And when someone creates a piece of art that lets you see into their world and it changes yours, let them know. I, I think a lot of people who create art just want to make a difference. People who grew up inspired by the music, the stories, the films they saw, felt it change something real inside of them and then knew that they had to make something themselves, reach out and touch the world the way that it had touched them. So when you can, in the moments you see something that stirs something inside of you, tell them. Say, your art matters. And even if you don't believe me, I know this to be true. I know, I know, because it matters to me. Who knows? It could change someone's life. Did I make a difference?